So today we're going to look at the basics of these motors and uh, how to get them started up running and the basics of driving one around. Maybe uh, you're new to coaching or you just haven't used uh, one of these types of uh, outboard motors before with the tiller on it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is to check our fuel, make sure that we have good fuel quantity and quality. You can do that by just lifting up on the tank, make sure there's gas in it, and also open it up, look, confirm there's gasoline in it, and make sure there's no dirt or debris inside the tank. We can see our little fuel pickup at the very bottom of the tank there. There's no leaves or dirt or water in the bottom of the fuel that might uh, cause a problem for us later on when we're running the motor. We're also gonna want to, once we get our gas cap on there tight, undo our vent cap. By undoing that little vent cap there, we're gonna allow air to flow back into the tank as the gasoline is taken out by the motor and you have negative pressure then. Uh, not too common, or not too uncommon rather, to see boats going down the river and the motor stop working because of someone forgetting to open up this vent cap here, air not being allowed to get back in, and you'll see this, uh, this gas tank just sucked, just squeezed all the way down from that negative pressure inside there. So open that up and then at the end of practice, make sure you close it so nothing leaks out. We'll come over here to our fuel connector there. Check it, make sure there's no dirt or debris. That's where our fuel's gonna come out from that little brass plunger there. That other little hole there connects to our motor. So we'll look over here, we'll line them up with each other. And it snaps on there. We'll take our primer bulb and we'll give it a couple good squeezes. That just puts a little bit of fuel directly to the motor. And also you can confirm that the air on the primer bulb is pointed towards the motor. So uh, fuel's actually flowing that direction, not uh, back flowing towards the tank. Then we'll go ahead and connect our kill switch to us. That's a really important thing to do is make sure you have your kill switch connected so that if you by chance are unfortunate to come out of the boat that uh, you do not uh, get so far away from the boat where you can't swim back to it or it takes off and hurts someone. So we've got our kill switch connected. We've got our motor in neutral. Confirm it's in neutral there. And we'll go ahead and pull our choke switch on. So just that choke lever, slide it out once. We'll give one little push on the primer bulb and one big pull. There we go. So we've got our red light on here. That red light shows us that the oil pressure warning system is working. We can go ahead and put our choke switch off. The motor's running good. We'll turn this off here. Typically we want to leave the choke switch on for about 15 to 30 seconds on a really cold morning, maybe even longer, to let the motor warm up. Then we can turn it off before we use the motor for practice and start going. You do not want to motor down the river or have the motor in gear uh, with the choke switch on. That'll foul up the spark plugs and just gives the motor too much fuel. Uh, this little red light here is normal to come on when the motor starts. You want to see it come on when it starts and then you want to see it go out right away. If it comes on during practice or while you're using the motor, it means you're low on oil and you should shut the motor off right away and uh, then go back to the dock and refill your motor with oil uh, and figure out why you're low on oil, if it drained out or if there's a leak or something like that. And uh, once again, cannot reiterate enough that you need to have your kill switch on. I'll demonstrate how it works here. We have two ways to shut the motor off. We can push in on this little red button here and that will uh, stop the engine from running or we could pull the kill switch out. So by just pulling that out, if you were to fall out of the boat, it cuts the motor off so that you can actually swim back to your boat and that your coaching launches and take off and go run over some athletes somewhere. Next thing to look at on this particular motor, some of them have just a throttle and then a lever for, of course, forward, neutral, reverse. This one's a little bit different. We can just push down this little lever here and tilt her tilt down. We have twist for forward and then twist more to go faster. Twist back into neutral twist the other way to go into reverse, and then twist more to go faster in reverse. So be very cautious. You can switch from neutral to forward and reverse very quickly this way, but you can also go into forward and get up to high speed very quickly. So you don't want to uh, accidentally twist too much and throw yourself out of the boat. Also be very cautious about having the motor turn on the boat, having it turn left or right when you're shifting into gear, because that can often uh, kind of tip the boat if you give it too much gas and tip yourself out. As long as you have your kill switch on, the motor will stop. Make sure you have your kill switch on. Another little thing to look at here, some motors are really easy to turn back and forth, some are really hard, and most people don't know it's because of this little lever here. So that little lever there is what controls the steering friction. So it makes it easier to turn or harder to turn 
in case you had to let go of the uh, throttle there momentarily. Also, likewise, there's a throttle friction. So turning in on here makes it harder to twist the throttle. Undoing that makes it easier to twist the throttle. A few other things to note, if it's a really cold morning and you're trying to get this motor started, you would have to use your choke, give it a little bit extra fuel, and maybe even push on your throttle only button here on the side, push the throttle only button in while twisting this to about quarter to half throttle. And if you're not sure where that is, well, you could just twist it all the way to full throttle and then halfway back. Give it a nice big pull, and that'll help give extra fuel and extra air to get the motor started a little quicker. An important thing to note is that when this starts up finally, and you have uh, the motor running at high RPM, you want to bring it back down to neutral or, or to idle speed as quickly as possible so you don't hurt the motor when you first start up. So we'll see what that sounds like. So that's the basics of it. For some more advanced videos, you can click on the link inside here and look at some other ways. If you have a summer motor that's not starting up for you, or if you suspect you have some issues, check out some of our other videos on our Boatman section to repair these motors. If you want to look official, like you know what you're doing, you can uh, pop off the cover here. And how you'll do that is by just turning around the back side of the motor, lifting up on the latch backwards, and then twisting that up so it's free. And we'll take our cowling, we'll lift up and also push forward on it. And that will remove the cover from the motor. And then we can get at all our mechanical stuff. I know all this looks really complicated, but it's all pretty simple stuff. And if you check out our Boatman section, a lot of that will make more sense to you. There's a lot more good videos that help explain all this. Hopefully you found this one helpful and good luck to you.